This is really cool. This is Thomas Edison's original recording studio. That's the Kronos Quartet. And surrounding us, 125 years or more of recording technology. The Kronos is recording direct to wax cylinder. That's what that large horn affair pointed towards us is all about. But around here behind us, we've got some more stuff going on. These guys are recording direct to disc, 78 RPM disc, the same technology that was prevalent in the 1920s and 1930s. Back there, that fellow is recording to analog quarter inch tape technology from approximately the 1940s and 50s. Very different sound. And over here on the floor, into a laptop directly, a modern digital multi-track recorder. This one happens to be Digital Performer. You might have heard of Pro Tools. There are other platforms out there. The sound is just absolutely marvelous. They all sound great, but they all sound different. That's why we're here. Kronos in ancient Greek refers to the living embodiment of time. So it's appropriate that the Kronos Quartet should be playing out one of Johann Sebastian Bach's scores of musical events simultaneously into recording gear from different periods. David Harrington is the quartet's leader. What I was thinking of was, was almost like an archeological dig and that we discover how we would have sounded if we would have been alive and recording in the late 19th century, early part of the 20th century. To me, it's, it's like a, a musical discovery. And it, 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 like an audio time machine. It's an audio time machine. It's, it's something that um, I've wanted to do for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. When I first knew that this studio existed, I thought, one day I want Kronos to be here. This unique multi-recording media session is part of a much larger project by producer John Carlin. About 25 years ago, I started an organization called Red Hot that produces albums to benefit AIDS organizations around the world. Red Hot is also essentially a creative production company, and the cornerstone of what we do is reinterpret music in a very contemporary way. So rather than thinking of classical music as this very old-fashioned, kind of wealthy approach, we're saying that this is an exciting new thing. Red Hot is not just recording an album. They're making an interactive iPad app. The user of the iPad app will be able to toggle and switch back and forth between these different sound mediums and essentially for the first time hear what things would have sounded like to your great-grandmother, your grandmother, your parents, and your children. That digital music player in your pocket traces some of its ancestral tech to Edison's phonograph of a century and a quarter past. One of the few technicians who still practices the art and science of wax cylinder recording is Edison curator Jerry Fabris. We're sort of recreating some of the earliest experiments they did here because one of the things they found out early on was it's difficult to record strings. A string quartet is it's not a loud, powerful sound. And you, for acoustical recording, it's, it's literally the air pressure that is powering the machine. Listening to the Kronos is exciting. What's happening in the realm of physics is that the hairs on their bow are exciting the strings of their instruments. Those marvelous curvaceous instruments resonate, which cause the air to vibrate. Actually, what's happening in the air is the molecules are being compressed and then rarefied and compressed and rarefied. All of that produces a wave. The wave enters this cone shape, looks like a funnel. And as it progresses down the funnel shape, the energy is concentrated. This causes a tiny little disc, it's called the diaphragm, way down here to move back and forth, kind of like the eardrum in your ear. Attached to that diaphragm is a little stylus. It pokes into the soft wax, and a picture of the waveform in the air is created. An analog recording is born. To hear the way we sound it. You feel the inner workings of things. You, you can see them with, with the wax cylinder. It's fascinating. And there's something about the resonance here in this room. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to describe it, but you do feel history here. Thomas Alva Edison may not have been the nicest guy, that's another story, but there's no denying his genius. 
Not only a hyper-innovative technologist, he became a media mogul as well. Sound familiar? Thomas Edison was the Steve Jobs of the 20th century, maybe by a factor of 10, because what he really understood was that electricity allowed for the reproduction and the manufacturing and distributing, distribution of recorded media, movies, and music. And that changed everything. He didn't just essentially bring movies and music to us, he invented the electrical grid. He was the guy that wired the world. Pretty much everything that we take for granted came out of his imagination, and we're in the room that he worked in. We'd do this every day if we could. Plus, we've never recorded Bach before. Right. You know, is known for doing 20th century music and very modern stuff. 21st like century to, music. And now, you know, yeah. What's it like to record old music with old technology? It was kind of refreshing, <laughs> you know? It didn't feel something old and dusty at all. It felt like it was fresh and new and alive. And, uh, and we got to hear it right away and got to see the uh, little scraps of this kind of sawdust from the cylinders and, and, and there's, there's lots of stuff here that you don't normally get to see. Yeah, you're really making music. Yeah. It's a physical thing. Yeah. You might know the term, it's still in use today, cut a record. Um, that's literally what's going on. We're cutting wax shavings from uh, the cylinder. So my job while the record is being cut is to gently blow the shavings out of the way. I'm sitting at home, it's 1899. I have a wax cylinder of a recording. I've played it a hundred times, it's gone. Can I shave that off, put it on my home phonograph and have my child sing into the horn and make a recording? Yeah, that was one of the uh, selling points of the cylinder machine is you could make your own records at home. And you're right, uh, the way that you prepare the record is you, you shave, it, you shave a, a thin layer, the top layer off the record. Um, and that's actually what I did to prepare for today, is, uh, is I, I have a machine, it's basically a lathe, but it's called a, a, a shaver, shaving machine. And uh, so I shaved all the cylinders smooth, and the goal is to get, to get the surface as smooth as possible, because any roughness creates noise. I've heard the expression canned music. Well, here's music in a can. This is the way Edison's cylinders were distributed to the public. But that term, canned music, actually has a famous history. It was coined by none other than John Philip Sousa, the band director. He and Edison had a little tussle back and forth, probably over copyrights and legal issues. And for a while, he kind of scoffed at this format. But it didn't prevent him from recording his band, canning his music for history. You had a chance to hear a playback of various recording technologies, basically the 125, 130 year history of audio recording tonight. What was it like hearing the wax cylinder in comparison? I recognized all of these sounds, but I'd never heard Kronos in those sounds. I've heard CD recordings of, of Edison cylinders, but I've never actually heard a real cylinder through the kind of system that people listen to it. It really is like hearing us in a new way. And that's what Kronos is all about. <laughs>